Two and a half years ago, 100 pioneer buses were introduced on the streets of Kampala. Citizens love them. They were cheap and comfortable. Every day you could see people waiting to board. But the buses only operated for a very short time, not even a year. Then they were stopped. Because the company didn't pay 8 billion Ugandan shilling of taxes. The big buses can carry 61 people. They could have been an ease to Kampala's traffic problem. But since two years, the buses are now rotting at Nambala Stadium. And yet, the public citizens are asking for their return. We asked the government to bring back those buses and also bring others. The taxis are not enough because we are so many. The buses were so good. They are cheap because one pays only 500 shillings from Cherando to town. They have helped them so much, but nowadays you find people standing on the roadside. You bypass them while on a motorcycle as they wait for their car. They lack proper means of transport. I want them back really bad <laughs> because uh, that, during that time they'll have schedules, the time they'll be here. Right now it's done and these taxi drivers, they strike sometime and they're not there. But those pioneer buses are reliable, cheap and very fast. Citizens really want them back. We contacted the management of Pioneer Bus to find out about the current statues of the company. They refused to talk to us. But during our interview with the KCCA spokesperson Robert Columba, we heard something surprising. I would like us to reveal to that Pioneer Bus is actually coming back. Oh, actually coming back to our schools. It's just that they had to sort themselves out. Uh, with, uh, for example, Uganda revenue, you are, you are a, you are being asked for some money, tax, some big chunk of money. Uh, small, small issues. Remember that Pioneer Bus came on the streets because of the right to buy taxes, if you don't remember very well. So there were certain things that were never concluded, procedures. These are the things that have been concluded behind the scenes. Uh, so everything is, is set and they will be back next year. That was good news. We knew that the buses were at Nambala Stadium, so we went there to find out about their statues and if they were degrading. We found God, Robert or Don. It's me who takes care of these buses. I take care of the engines, the TVs and the batteries. They are in good shape. Whatever arguments which were there, I can confirm that everything is set for their return. Whatever arguments were there. They are set for the return and they will be making a return next year. However, they will not be the only players in the bus transport industry. Already there is Awakule Nume. Awakule Numele started operating in September 2013. It is an initiative of Utoda, the Ugandan Taxi Operators and Drivers Association. They are the ones operating taxis in Kampala. But when we talked to Enoch Lothar, secretary of Utoda Circle, he told us that he thinks big buses are not a solution of Kampala's traffic problem. The problem cannot go away because one, the buses are much wider. The roads that we are referring to are much smaller. So when you bring buses, they will be congested in one small area and the traffic could even be worse than what, what it is. So before you talk about using buses as an alternative, you must talk about expansion. We are actually doing that. If you, look, if you are to look at Ginger Road, for example, we made it a, a dial road, a dual road. Uh, we expanded it. Um, we got $175 million from World Bank, and it's going into uh, infrastructure development. And part of the things we're going to do is to actually expand roads. For example, the road from the traffic lights of Wanda Gap going up to McCree University, all the way to Shares Johnson, up to Nankulavie, that roundabout. What to expand it. So from not operating buses, we came to narrow roads and then to the traffic problem in general. So we wanted to find out what actually causes jam in Kampala. Number one is uh, poor driving methods. Number two, narrow roads. Uh, number three, um, lack of signaling. Uh, traffic signal in, in town. Uh, number four, also it's a sign of prosperity. There are quite a number of people who can afford to buy cars and uh, pass through it. So 
apart from those of the reasons why. One thing is clear, KCCA has big plans for Kampala. As KCCA, we are looking into the transformation of the transport sector as a whole. One, regulation of the border borders. That's the reason why we register them. For example, when we roll out our plan uh, by next year, uh, some borders will not be in position to go to certain places in Kampala. Number two, we are looking at buses. Buses are coming in um, to help with the traffic. They carry large volumes of people in a safer environment on the border. Number three, we are looking at people opening up taxi parks outside Kampala. So the taxi, taxi they have to come. All taxis, if you have to notice, all of them, even in Bali, they all come to Kampala. Number four, we are looking at cable parts. Recently we went for uh, a forum the second German Africa Infrastructure Forum, where the issue of cable cars in Uganda was discussed extensively. Um, we are done with the feasibility study, and uh, we are looking at also that in the next like, two, three years. All that is to try and transform uh, um, transport in Kampala. Cable cars in Kampala. In two or three years, we found that very interesting and also very futuristic. KCCA has many plans to transform the transport sector. The return of Pioneer buses is only one of them. So remember that we are trying to take baby steps. Europe moved decades ago in the transport. They organized themselves decades ago. KCCA has been in charge of transport in Kampala for just three years. So remember it's just baby steps. Baby steps. But we have it all in plan. Let us see in two or three years where Kampala has reached.